So this is recovery week because the trails open next week. Time to hit it. But recovery wasn't so much recovery this week. Lots of wood chopping, big branches. We're headed over there, let's go. There she is in the shade, bad light, but that is the trail. That's Adams Ridge and Adams Canyon. Both these trails open this time next week. And what I'm doing today is I'm headed this way, following these electrical lines. There's a trail that comes towards me, but cuts off into that little commercial development down there and I'm gonna see if I connect it so then what that's gonna allow me to do is to do a climb up the ridge over on the ridge back down and loop around so if I can link this up it'd be pretty key and it looks like I'm gonna be kind of Heading through, heading through a lot of sagebrush. So, but I think I can connect as long as I stay, stay uh, following the electrical lines. Right down there is home, and it's a, it's a nice day. A little overcast. It was super warm this morning, but I overdressed. It's still, still super nice and super warm, but clouds are covering up the sun. But. Um, so we're gonna get into a little coaching stuff after I link this up, but wanna talk shoes as usual. Today I'm testing, this is my fourth test run in the Arcteryx Norvan SL. The SL stands for super light and that's what they are, they're super light. And I've, these are probably the most interesting shoes that I've come across in a really, really long time. And why they're interesting to me is the Arcteryx has made these for going super light and super fast in the mountains, extreme alpine environments. Um, but since they're super light, and somewhat minimal their positioning is that this is a short course shoe but i'm looking at it for just the opposite so i that's why this is so interesting to me is that i can hopefully use this shoe for a long distance shoe but super light when i see super light um the size the the Sample size, which is typically a nine US men's, is under 200 grams. That's super light. That's lighter than some racing road flats. Okay, this, this is the probably the lightest feeling shoe I've ever put on um, for a trail environment. And so that, that's why I'm super excited about this is that I, the, the, the caveat here and what I'm still trying to test out is that this is a seven mil drop. Okay, that's a little bit higher than I like to go for a light and fast shoe, but there's times when I'm looking for what I call an all day shoe, a shoe that I can be out in the mountains, rugged terrain all day and give my feet a little bit of recovery. A little bit, not, not recovery, but a little bit of reprieve. That it just takes a little bit of stress off. So. There's, I found a couple shoes that sometimes my all day shoe will be an eight mil drop. Keep in mind, it's what you do most of the time that's important, okay? So I'm looking at this shoe as potentially my all day shoe that is gonna give my feet a little bit of a break 
because I'm so used to a lower drop, but with that, again, that lightweight performance feel. And I'm still testing out. There's some funkiness to it that I need to work through, but my size 11 is still like 220 grams and that's unbelievably light. And so, so far so good, but I'm gonna, I'll, I'll eventually be doing a full review, but I just wanted to kind of give you a heads up on the Arcteryx Norvan S. So here we go, hip hopping in through. Just gonna kind of work my way over, following the electrical lines. Maybe I can find some game trails. Maybe this is a little game trail right here. Maybe I found something. Won't be long until I connect it, but um, stay tuned. We'll see you up there. Definitely on a game trail, but I'm a little higher than I need to be. I need to be down there. But it won't be bad because normally I'll be looping back around this way. So it'll be after all the climbing and it'll be nice cool down. Kind of some rough going. It's not. It's not super fast, but wasn't expecting it to be super fast, but it's kind of picking my way over, but we're gonna accomplish the goal of linking it up and my shoes are coming untied. Stop up here. Ooh, I think I, my trail, my trail might be right up here. Anyways, you can start to see some of the ridge that will be part of this new link up. Tie my shoe. Did I mention the grip on these are amazing? Amazing grip, probably the best grip I've had. Okay, note to self, I think I need to stay on the uphill side of the power lines. Cause here's where I think I butt into my trail and I was on the other side of the power lines. Okay, I should be able to get a good vantage point right at the top of this little outcrop here. Things are getting a little easier as far as terrain but should be able to see where I need to go. Yeah, I'm still the ways I need to get over, over there. So I'm heading the right direction. It's getting warm, way overdressed. Could have been a shorts and t-shirt day, but that's how it goes in April. And here, here's a good shot of how the ridge, I'm just going along the base of the ridge and there's the high point and we'll drop down there to loop around. And I can start to see the trail. You can kind of see we're headed right straight through and should hit the trail here in about a couple minutes. Okay, so this is an ascent trail that goes up to the ridge and this is where the paragliders will hike up and their, their launch spot is up on this part of the ridge. And depending on the wind direction, they, they launch from what is considered Adams, Adams Ridge. Um, and Jackson Hole is one of the more uh, sought after places to come paraglide. And here's our trail. Just grass, not very well traveled. It'll turn the dirt up here which then becomes a secondary trail. This is really about a half a mile from my house, so that's why I want to kind of link this up so I can minimize as much pavement time as possible when I come to do the, do the Adams Ridge loop. And here we are. Kind of the official start of the, the trail. So normally I have to run the bike path all the way up to here and start it here where that orange sign is. Um, 
and then I can run and catch it here but I want to again try to link it up so most of my time most of my time spent on dirt there's another good shot of the ridge again there's the high point right there and we'll be coming down here but again this is this is not open yet this is about as much as I can do with the closure of the trails until next week. They shut them down for wildlife migration. And you can start seeing some of the, the south end of the hole. I'm gonna keep running and talk about what we're gonna talk about. We, I got an email from one of my new athletes he is an ultra runner from Switzerland and I assigned him some hill repeats and I'm going to come over here. Here's our trail sign that just goes to the road and this wraps into coming off the ridge. So there's our, our descent off the ridge depending on which direction you're going. And it just wraps right around here and now I can link things up. And there's the ridge. It's about, I have to look at my files again, but I think it's about a five mile loop. It's the ridges. There's really no trail on the, on the ridge. You're just staying on the ridge. And it's, so it's pretty slow going. So it's just a good Alpine type of training and then you can open it up on this trail part but anyway so what i was talking about is something that you can institute on your hill day your hill repeat day that really i assign to all of my runners and the purpose is to train your body to lead with the hips and engage the core and engage the glutes and take stress off your quads when climbing or running uphill. And the, the simple workout goes like this, is that they get their warm up in and then they're doing anywhere from four to eight hill repeats with their hands behind their head. And with their hands behind their head, keeping their elbows wide this forces them to open up, to stand tall, to lead with the hips, to engage the core, and like I said, engage the glutes. And this helps with cadence. This, just as importantly, I think maybe even more importantly for those with lower cadence climbing, is a lot of times because of going up and the grade of going up, our, our cadence will naturally be a little slower but we still don't want to spend a lot of time on the ground. So when we're climbing up a hill, there's a tendency to slow our cadence down, land and be, spend too much time on the ground and our knee goes forward before we take off. Okay, so we want to minimize, regardless of the type of running we're doing, whether it's uphill, downhill or on flats, we want to minimize our ground contact time. We want to avoid this. But climbing up a hill by getting too much flexion here, puts a lot of stress on the quads, a lot of stress on the calf, and shuts the glutes off. Okay, so by simply putting hands behind our head, it really force, forces us to get off and stay here versus landing and going forward. It's really hard by throwing your arms behind your head to kind of do it improperly. By simply putting your hands behind your head and doing some drills running uphill that way, it just naturally quickens your feet up because now you have to really engage the lower body and run with your lower body rather than lean. Um, and it, it just, I found that it really helps with quickening things up and getting off your, off your foot. So try that out. It's just a simple drill. That's kind of the training the mind and the neuromuscular system to then do normal repeats. So again, the workout, they do four to eight of these with their hands behind their head to understand that feeling and to train that neuromuscularly and then their their second set is 
a number of repeats that are done with normal arms trading to create that same feeling that, that the drill did with the hands behind the head. So try that out. It's a, again, it's just simple, a simple thing to do within what you're probably already doing that really can really benefit everything we talked about. Okay, so give it a try and I'm gonna find a hill to do mine. So um, thanks for watching as always and can't wait. Can't wait to take you up here next week along the ridge, show you my Hotan Trail. See ya.